This project is um, about translator certification examinations. It's not about student translations that they do in the classroom. There are many, many studies of students, how they translate. But this is prof about professional translators and what kind of errors they make when they are seeking certification within an established framework. In, and our framework is with the American Translators Association, which is the only um, provider of certification exams in the United States. But we'd, we're now we're looking more broadly to other parts of the world and s to try to find out. So the question is whether there are other projects out there similar to ours. That's what I'm, the question I'm hoping to answer uh, this week. We have sole access to the certification exams that were given start, uh, all the way back to 2006. We have 2006 to 2017. We have to wait a while after they're given so that they can um, reach some kind of privacy uh, openness, and then we'll get more exams as the years progress. So, the attributes of the collection. It's, of, from our perspective, the collection that we have access to, by the way, these are paper exams. There's a long history to that, and handwritten. It's mostly about security, a security model, uh, because this is a high-stakes examination. So, what are the attributes? Uh, we have sole access to these older exams. We must anonymize them before we put them in the database, of course. We think that they're very, it, very important to the research community, the translation studies community, the information in these exams. And we think that they're quite valuable um, because to reproduce the whole system that created these exams in the first place would be extremely expensive. Um, approximately one million euros per year for the entire system, all the 30 or 40 language combinations, the greater systems, the greater training, the arbitration, the management. There's a huge, huge system uh, behind this. And so we think that it's very, it's extremely valuable data and it must not be lost. Right now there are still some of these years that are available only on the original paper and we're scanning them at least into uh, high resolution bit images before we do further digitization. <clears throat> what value do we add to an actual bit image of the exam? One packet is approximately 30 pages for one exam packet, and we have permission at this point to process over 5,000 packets. That's really quite a bit of information. We do transcription, and we check the transcription with a second person to make sure it's accurate. We create a bitext. If you're in translation studies, you know that's source and target text segmented and aligned. We run it through a what's called a scorecard. The particular one we use was originally developed at DFKI in Germany in conjunction with the QT21 project, which was primarily machine translation. And then it's been further developed at our university. By the way, it's a collaboration of two universities in the United States, BYU and KSU. We also <clears throat> have decided to map the ATA grading framework marking 
to a, a forthcoming international standard, which is MQM, stands for multidimensional quality metrics for analytic quality evalu evaluation. And it's becoming the standard for this, uh, for the ty error typology. So we're mapping to that, but it takes some intellectual effort to do the mapping. And then <clears throat> we have also decided to take the output of the scorecard, which was uh, selected by DFKI to be a JSON format, and we were developing a mapping to TEI to make it easier to share with the digital humanities community. We're applying for a grant from the National Endowment for Humanities to continue the work. It's quite expensive. And they require a sustainability clause plan. So we are looking, among other platforms, at uh, the Tapas Project, which is for long-term archi archiving and retrieval of TEI data. And then we but we also need to have a more granular SQL database. We're, uh, we're still examining multiple options there. But we, we think we, we are obligated, because of the value of this data, to de develop it so that it will be available for at least 20 years after most of us on the project are long gone. And so we'd like, to, we'd like to, first of all, <clears throat> uh, I'd like to find out whether there is anybody, and I could go into a lot more detail on these things, but what I'm really interested in is is there anybody in the room who is actually working on a similar project to annotate, to make available to researchers annotated translations associated with professional translators. Most of the translation done out there in a commercial environment is definitely not available to researchers. It's proprietary. You, you can't get into the front, into the door of the translation companies. Uh, they, they don't even want to talk about making it available. So this is a unique way to get it through these certification exams, and we have a contract with the American Translators Association. But we're very curious, is there anybody else in the world that's doing something like this? The Quebec Translators Association certifies translators, but it's not through a written translation exam. It's a portfolio approach. So, anybody out there doing something similar? This is why I'm here. Anybody know of anybody? So anywhere in the world doing something similar? Well, thank you. I'll leave more time for the next one, next presenter, <laughs> unless there are questions. <laughs>